Now, on Tuesday, Wisconsin's new carbon monoxide detector law goes into effect. So what are the new requirements? Lori Worth from the Madison Fire Department is here with some answers. And I know a lot of people, including myself, need to get current and, and really understand all this because mm -hmm. it can be a little confusing. It is a little confusing, and we really had some people who have confused it with our local smoke alarm ordinance, mm -hmm. so they're not really sure. But the state's requirements are really pretty simple. Mainly, they, they require one carbon monoxide alarm on each level okay. of a home. Now, this is any home, whether you're a renter, whether you're... Um, you know, a single family homeowner mm -hmm. live in a duplex, and that's the biggest change because multifamily has been covered by previous laws, but this new one pertains to homeowners, single family duplexes. And all we, we are looking for is a carbon monoxide alarm on each level of the house, and that's, uh, you're exempt if you have no fueling, fuel burning appliances. Mm -hmm or if you have no attached garage, but there are very few of those few around. Of those. <laughs> and you brought a couple examples. Here's I did. the one we have this one in our mm -hmm. couple a bunch of those in our house. And that's the other thing people are confused about because they're saying, well what kind of battery power, what kind of power source do we need? There's no requirement on power source. Mm -hmm. um, you can get uh, something that you install very similarly to a smoke alarm smoke on the alarm. ceiling. Sure. Or you can get this plug in device we do encourage you to get battery backup. Now, as far as the sensing technology, there's very little difference. What you're looking for, whenever you are looking for any kind of um, appliance, is something from an independent testing lot, uh, laboratory like Underwriters Laboratory. Okay. That's, that's the one thing that will say, yes, this has been tested, it meets certain standards. After that, the testing uh, sensing mechanism is, is similar. Uh, and follows the same technology. Mm -hmm. What you're looking at after that are features. And a lot of people like a feature that allows a readout to give you sort of a, a baseline yeah. and lets you know if there are exactly. fluctuations. Exactly. And you and it's good to have the battery backup because if the power goes out, which can happen, especially in the mm -hmm. wintertime, when right. we have storms and right. all that. So you want that battery back. Right, because those power outages a lot of times can contribute to situations that bring on the carbon mm -hmm. monoxide. So uh, we think that's really important to have the battery backup, but also for a lot of people there's peace of mind in having that readout. If it goes over 50 parts per million, you know you probably have a problem and that's when you start to reach toxic mm -hmm. levels. And it's, it's such a good thing to, to have if, uh, if I, uh, because we, we hear about these, these carbon monoxide deaths or people at least getting ill mm -hmm. and being rescued fortunately at the last minute. We get calls pretty frequently, particularly in the winter months when yeah. you know people are firing up their furnaces. Mm -hmm. And we've certainly seen a lot of rather dramatic saves yeah. where people were putting the children to bed and all of a sudden the alarm sounded and they got out and when our firefighters go in and they monitor the the space and see what the levels are mm -hmm. they know full well that if that alarm hadn't warned the family they wouldn't have been around mm -hmm. come morning oh boy all right Lori thanks for the update thank you for uh, having nice me to see appreciate you. It. visit anytime okay thanks <laughs>